about the cause of stiffness, we must go back to our basic understanding about collagen. Collagen being the main component of our connective tissue, which is from 25 to 35 percent of all of our body protein. Collagen comes from the Greek word cola for glue with the suffix gen for producing. Collagen, producing glue, holding things together. Collagen is indeed what keeps our tissue held together. In this schematic drawing, we see the collagen fibers that hold this complex matrix of cellular components together in order to create human tissue. There is a greater abundance of collagen, as we know, in tendons, ligaments, and skin, with the fibroblast being the most common cell which creates collagen. It's also the most numerous fiber in our connective tissue. And it's collagen that gives us this wonderful, unique ability to be flexible and yet to have strength in our tissue. Each fiber of collagen is actually not elastic. It actually taken one fiber at a time has a tensile strength that is greater than steel of the equal size. But the elastic quality afforded our body is created not by each fiber, but by the manner in which the fibers are constructed in relationship to one another. This wonderful ability to have strength within the basic unit but to be constructed in a way that allows flexibility is what makes the human body unique. It's somewhat like nylon. Nylon as a thread is relatively inelastic and very strong in comparison to other fibers. But as we know, when we knit it into a stocking, it becomes very elastic. And you can actually take a, a stocking that is relatively small and you can pull it up over a leg and it will enlarge to the shape of the leg. This schematic drawing shows us that these fibers can be in one direction, but when force is applied, they then will move in another direction because of their relationship to one another. So we have the injury and the natural response is for the body to create new collagen to heal the wound. This collagen is less organized and therefore less elastic. And that is what creates stiffness. This new collagen actually has less cross-linking, which we'll discuss in more detail momentarily. And it is less organized. New collagen is weaker, and therefore it cannot carry the forces of more mature collagen. If we apply stress to the new collagen, meaning the healing wound, you can see in the illustration on the right, that the collagen fibers become more parallel. The alignment of collagen fibers that are new collagen fibers depend on the stress applied to the healing newly disorganized collagen. As we've said, the injury creates new disorganized collagen that leads to stiffness. And we've also said that immobilization contributes to stiffness, but it does so by creating an abnormal cross-linking of the collagen. If there is limited motion or limited stress, there is a trigger to increase collagen cross-linking. And this cross-linking additionally then adds to the stiffness. 
This is the specific reason that we focus on early motion is to influence the newly healing tissue, which is disorganized, and apply stress so that the tissue fibers are in greater alignment. And it's also to minimize immobilization and therefore prevent abnormal cross-linking. Now, cross-linking is necessary because that is what creates tensile strength. But an abnormal level of cross-linking actually prevents movement of the differential tissue layers. Here in this schematic drawing, we see that this would be the collagen fibers, and when force is applied, they would elongate. But these red dots represent collagen cross-linking, and thus when the same force is applied, the collagen cross-linking prevents as much movement and therefore limits motion. Therefore, joint stiffness is either abnormally cross-linked collagen, which is a result of limited motion or immobility, and or new but disorganized collagen, which has less elasticity because of the lack of alignment of the fibers. This schematic drawing shows us a representation of a normal level of collagen cross-linking that provides the strength but elasticity. But when an excessive number of cross-links are added, it then is impossible for movement to occur. This exquisite video from Gwen Breteau shows us the relationship of a tendon to the surrounding tissue and shows us that the tissues are interrelated and that there must be movement between these tissue layers. They're not separate entities, but the tissue fibers must conform and stretch and elongate and change in response to movement. Human tissue is responsive to stress applied. And if we apply a constant stress, we can deform or change the shape of the tissue. So over time, as we apply the force, a phenomenon described as creep will occur. In other words, the tissue will respond. This is possible because of the nature of the human tissue, but because it is viscoelastic, it also means that there will be some return after the stress is removed. When we are feeling passive range of motion and we feel a soft infeel, I would suggest to you that what we're feeling is new disorganized collagen. We're also feeling in that soft response the presence of edema. This means that these tissues are responsive, as we know, and that we can change or deform the new collagen by applying intermittent stress. But when we examine a more chronic stiffness and there is a hard end feel, this represents cross-linked collagen that is preventing range of motion. And unfortunately, no longer will the intermittent application of stress be as successful to affect change. There is a difference in the approach we should take toward stiffness that is a result of new disorganized collagen and or edema, and abnormally cross-linked collagen.